The first laptop with a Snapdragon 8 CX chipset and it was released not too long ago by Microsoft. They white labeled the processor as the Microsoft SQ1. And I thought it was a great little competitor to the iPad Pro. You can check out my full video on it here. But while I did enjoy it, it sort of felt like it was a bit crippled in the battery life department. Qualcomm, the makers of the Snapdragon 8 CX, have shown us crazy multi-day battery life estimates from these chipsets, at least in PowerPoints. And then Microsoft finally used it, but gave the laptop that it was in a very small battery, opting instead for a much thinner and lighter form factor. So I was curious what a laptop with a bigger battery and a more traditional clamshell form factor would be able to do with the Snapdragon 8 CX inside. And it seems that, well, Samsung was also curious about that. This is the Samsung Galaxy Book S, and it was originally announced alongside the Galaxy Note 10 series back in August. And it's the latest laptop with a mobile-centric Snapdragon processor inside, but with a traditional style and, most importantly to me, a bigger battery. Really quick though, let's go through every single feature we possibly can in this Galaxy Book S complete walkthrough. Now, the first thing you'll notice about it is just how light and slim it is. It's to the point where every time I've been at a cafe writing on it, at least one person has come over to ask me what model it was because, quote, it was just so thin. It weighs just under a kilogram or 2.11 pounds. So it is very light and being that it is only 11.8 millimeters thick when closed and each half is about 6.2 millimeters when open, I get why people notice the lack of thickness when I'm using it. You could get the laptop in two different colors, mercury gray, which is dark gray to me, and earthy gold, which I have here, which is almost a pink purplish color, depending on the lighting you're in. For the display, we have a 13.3 inch FHD touchscreen that is 16 by nine in aspect ratio. Above that screen, we have a 720p webcam. And here's what the webcam looks like and sounds like. And under the screen at the top right, we have our fingerprint sensor to let you log into the computer via Windows Hello, which is one of my favorite ways to unlock a laptop. And I find it just a bit faster than Windows Hello facial recognition, honestly. And with that said, this is probably a good time to mention our sponsor for this video, Kaspersky. They are a leading antivirus company that is right now trying to draw attention to the fact that biometric logins like fingerprints are becoming more and more popular. But unlike a password being stolen that you can just change, what happens when your fingerprint gets stolen? So they partnered with Benjamin Way, a Swedish 3D accessory designer, to create a concept product that has a biometric stone comprised of conductive fibers suspended in a rubber compound that your fingerprint sensor can read as an actual fingerprint. This way you can use it instead of your finger, and if you lose it or the print on it is stolen, it can be disabled, the pattern on it can be changed remotely, and or you can just get a new one. You can learn more about biometric authentication and some of the clever tech being developed to help with these issues at the link in the description below. Now next to that fingerprint sensor, we have AKG tuned speakers that support Dolby Atmos and sound like this. In this trident resides the power of Atlantis. Then we have our white backlit keyboard that has a bit of a squish to it, honestly, which isn't my favorite, but it's comfortable enough to type on and quiet, thankfully. You can't control the backlighting, by the way, it seems, and it is instead tied to a light sensor, which determines if it should be on or off. Now, beneath the keyboard, we have our trackpad, which is thankfully a Microsoft Precision trackpad, so you can use Windows' built-in gestures, and well, it's just more precise than trackpads that aren't. For ports, we have two USB-C ports, one on either side, and both can be used to charge the laptop, which, by the way, comes with a very phone-esque charger, which I appreciate as it means even less bulk I have to bring with it when traveling. And we also have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the left. Moving to the bottom of the laptop, we actually have a tray here that you can slide out and it has two purposes. Firstly, you can upgrade the storage, which is 256 gigs, by adding a micro SD card with support up to one terabyte. Then we have one of the reasons you get one of these Qualcomm chipset powered laptops in the first place, and that's a nano SIM slot. Now I purchased a relatively inexpensive SIM card from a carrier store, popped it in, and now when I don't have Wi-Fi, I have LTE connectivity, which I never really thought I cared about, but already has been a nice feature to have while traveling or just posted up at a cafe whose Wi-Fi is garbage. Now, in addition to the LTE connectivity, we also have Wi-Fi up to 802.11ac, as well as GPS and Bluetooth 5.0 on board. Now, if you're not familiar, we need to talk quickly about the Qualcomm chipset that's in here and the experience that that provides. Firstly, it's not a high-performing chipset, so don't expect to game or edit videos on it, etc. Qualcomm themselves compare it to an Intel i5, for example. But the other thing to note is that it's an ARM processor, and without getting into too much detail, it is a different architecture for the chipset that requires different code changes compared to the much more prevalent x86 and x64. 
This means that while ARM chipsets are more battery efficient in theory, app developers need to create ARM versions of their apps for them to work on a device with an ARM processor. Qualcomm makes it so that most x86 and x64 apps can still run though, but they just run in an emulator of sorts. So. Bottom line, while most programs I use on a daily basis, that again aren't for video editing, seem to install and work just fine, I did run into some that just kind of errored instead. Again, most things work, but it's something to keep in mind. The upset to this type of chipset though, is power management. Now, while I will do a full real world battery test on this and spend an entire day with it and see how it does, let's quickly do a generic video playback test for a little bit, just to see how it roughly does. Now, for the software on this device, it's running full-blown Windows 10 and had very little bloatware on it, at least on this Korean model that I have here. The only additions were a few games that Windows likes to put in there, as well as some of the Samsung apps like Dex, Flow, Notes, and their own gallery. Thankfully though, any of these can easily be uninstalled by just right-clicking on them and selecting Uninstall. Now, most benchmarks won't run on this computer, see the architecture issue that I just mentioned, but I did get one to run, Geekbench. Four, and it does work on ARM. So here are the results for that for anyone that's just kind of curious. Again, not a powerhouse, but if in the real world it can last anywhere near the 25 hours of use that Samsung claims, it's a great light travel laptop for sure. Now there's only one SKU, which has the 8CX, eight gigs of RAM and a 256 gig internal storage option. And I actually bought mine from Korea. But for those of us in the US, we are still waiting for availability with the price supposedly going to be around $999. Personally, I would love to see a laptop like this a little bit closer to a Chromebook price because that's to me when it becomes really competitive, but we'll see how the real world test goes and how crazy that battery life actually is. Regardless, I'll leave a link below for anyone that might be interested in checking one out. There you guys, hope you enjoyed the complete walkthrough on the Galaxy Book S. I uh, will be doing, again, some other real-world tests on it and stuff, so stay tuned for that. Um, if you like this video, though, please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, and also check out my new series called Decoder, where I explain a piece of tech every week, go check out the channel and subscribe if you like what you see there. Ding the bell next door, subscribe, so you get notified when new videos come out. As always, though, regardless, thanks for watching.